the one thing that anyone will tell you, I just watched the video today where they were talking about that sort of stuff. The one thing about motorhomes, travel trailers, they are a never ending supply of projects. New or used, you're going to experience this wonderful aspect of being on a mobile lifestyle. Um, it's not that it's a bad thing, it's just you really do have to expect it. We have, have certainly had our fair share of projects, a whole bunch of which I think many people might find interesting, certainly the lighting and a couple of the other things that we discovered along the way. So one of the initial projects that we got into, not by accident, but by uh, discovery, was the tile in the bathroom. Uh, this came with porcelain tile uh, in the bathroom, but we basically were on a trip and uh, getting used to it, found a few things here and there, and one of the things we discovered was rather alarming. I got some pictures I'll uh, take you through and um, then show you the finished product. But uh, let's get right into it. In using our toilet, I noticed that it had a pretty good amount of wobble to it. And I uh, literally dug into what was going on and found out that I had a considerable amount of rot directly underneath the toilet. It stemmed from basically the water leaking from the connection hose. So it wasn't sewage, septage, it was just basically water. So I had to dig into this and uh, it was really quite a nasty proposition. I literally found the consistency of the plywood underneath to be that of soil and wet soil at that obviously. So that had to all come out. So I dug out all of the affected material and uh, then peeled up all of the balance of the porcelain tile throughout the rest of the bathroom. Um, it came up, uh, you know, pretty damn hard too. It was very well stuck down when you've got seven eighths of an inch of underlayment underneath it. It, it didn't really move a whole lot, so um, it was still really well stuck, uh, you know, after 25 years. Um, I dug all the way down, uh, you know, and cut out an, an, an oversized area to get nice new plywood, uh, you know, into the affected area and then out a little bit as well and, uh, you, you know, carry over onto the uh, aluminum floor joists underneath. Um, cleaned it all up, I put a fan on it for an entire day to dry it all out, and then I put a new piece of, new pieces of underlayment underneath there, they were both glued and screwed in, and, uh, got on to the next phase. Since, of course, this is a tile job in a vehicle, I wanted to make sure that the tiles were very well stuck down. I did my initial layout work, and then I very carefully buttered both the underlayment and the bottom of the tile just to make sure that I had a very very good bond between the two. You'll notice that there are accent strips in between and I did exactly the same thing with those and this was a very time consuming tile job because of them. They are not nearly the same thickness as the uh, slate tile that I used so I had to build that up pretty considerably. I have a background in bricklaying so you know it was very similar to uh, you, you know, laying bricks in between the tiles, and uh, again, I took my time and, uh, you know, basically spent about three or four hours getting these tile down, and it really, really paid off. I got all the tile down, and uh, then got ready for grout, cleaned everything up, and uh, grouted the tile. Uh, again, cleaned everything up, um, and my final step was I wanted to seal the tile because they are slate so I put down a semi-gloss polyurethane and uh, you know overall I, I really like the effect uh, we use an area little small area rug in there and uh, you know overall I think the floor came out absolutely beautiful so um, we have 10,000 miles uh, you know over some pretty rough roads and whatnot and uh, not so much as a hairline crack anywhere so anyone that uh, you know is in doubt as to using uh, tile and whatnot, uh, you know, it's just preparation and, uh, you, you know, uh, a, a good solid uh, uh, installation. Just take your time. 
Okay, you've seen all the slides of the pictures I took of the project. Now I guess it's time to maybe zoom in and have a look at the video. Since this is YouTube and we are all about videos. While I was doing the tile floor and the urethane on that, I resanded this floor. Again, like everything in uh, the old school beavers. Uh, it's beautiful oak. Um, very thick, very solid. As you can see around, it pretty much uh, carries through all the way around. I made all new window boxes as well. I did not like, I have one fabric one left in the first video. You can see it in the background. It's not very attractive in my opinion. So I made all wood. In certain instances, I guess, you know, you might think, well, my God, there's just so much wood. But, you know, it really is a beautiful thing when it's all uh, done as beautifully as, as this is. I put a keystone above each one of them. And above each one of them, I have a various memento from a trip as you can see here this is pretty much our creed ask believe and receive and i think that's an extremely important credo to have it really 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 does work we have a nice wine rack our saying there from the dalai lama above a capitalist forbes magazine gotta have that everything of course with a beaver is corian um, it, it, it really is a great, great, great surface material. And as we transition into the bathroom and the new tile, put a nice little deco strip along there. One thing I always point out, having done tile for a living, it centers on the toilet because, of course, when we sit down on the toilet and we're contemplating the mysteries of the universe, it's always really nice to have even geometry because otherwise it's one of those kind of things that would drive somebody like me crazy. So the center line actually follows on a line of the tile, comes out. You can see basically that's the edging that I used. I tried to keep as minimal amount of cuts as I possibly could around. Has a really nice big upright cabinet. That's where our washer and dryer is. works very well. One thing about that, just keep the vent cleaned out. It has a very sharp right angle in it. This isn't the easiest one to get at, but if you keep that clean, it really does do a great job drying the clothes afterwards, but it gets even a little bit of lint in there, which invariably it does after just a couple of loads. You've got to get in there and get it cleaned out, but I've got a little method that I use. I'll show it a later video to get it out. That's the wet lint drain on the right side. You could clean that out as well, but Fundamentally, when you keep these things uh, operating and um, know the little quirks that they have, they uh, certainly do work very well for you. Beaver also has a really fantastic shower, glass doors, brass trim, skylight. I use those tiles that you stick on. They're pretty nice. It was just a white fiberglass off-white fiberglass up there. I put those up there just to kind of jazz it up a little bit, kind of like that. Then I carried it over. That's a, a rounded corner of the shower. This is all one piece fiberglass shower in there. Bottom and sides has that rounded bit in there and I put some of those lick and stick tiles on there. Came out quite nice. Gives a little bit of depth. has a really nice amount of mirrors in here. My wife likes that. She actually likes this bathroom better in the bus than she does in the house. Again, they just do such a great job with all that oak woodwork. Again, there is just no particle board in here, no veneers. Uh, the corners are five quarter thick oak. Drawers are all solid, solid wood inside and out really makes for a, just a super, super solid vehicle. Got a couple of Tokyo Keaters that are going right now because, of course, I'm up in the northeast. That's the furnace outlet. So that basically is it. It was a nice, nice weekend project. Uh, you take your time, work at it, get it really, you know, the layout portion of it, and then taking the time to understand that this thing is moving down the road. You really want those tiles stuck down well and that you want to use a really good flexible mortar and grout. 
pretty easy to get. You just ask when you go in, you know, that you want something that'll give a pretty good amount of flex, and uh, they'll set you up. It's generally like a super flex, they call it. And that's what I used. And like I said, I buttered both the bottom, the uh, sub, sub layer, and the bottom of the tiles, and um, gave them a good little twist as I put them down, laid my lines out first, and, uh, you know, again, 10,000 miles down the road, it's uh, looking pretty good. And I think it will uh, certainly last for many, many, many years to come. So that's about it. This is, uh, you know, a nice, like I said, weekend project that uh, you can undertake. And, uh, you know, it's not like you have, if you don't want to use linoleum or, um, you know, some of those plastic type tiles and whatnot, you know, again, you can certainly get in there and get the tile done. It's just knowing all the right pieces and, uh, again, like I said, taking your time. So... Any questions or what have you, uh, let me know. And uh, by all means, I'll get some more of these coming. So if you'd like, please subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. All that good uh, YouTube stuff. And uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks again.